close your eyes and focus on your breath. Watch the breath all the way in, watch it all the way out. And if you feel any movement in the mind to go someplace else, say, just say, not right now. You've got to train the mind. This is one of the paradoxes of life, is that in order to tr gain freedom, you have to train the mind first. We like to think of freedom means basically doing what you want to do. And training, of course, means having to learn things you may not want to do. But look at people who don't get any training at all. People who don't go to school, they don't get any, have any knowledge, they can't get very far in life. Animals that haven't been trained don't go, do very well. You can't have them in your house. It's when you're, when you're well trained, okay, then you understand where your true freedoms are. Freedom is not just a matter of doing what you like, because then you're stuck with being a slave to your cravings. Your craving pulls you in one direction, you go with that. It pulls you in another direction, you go with that. The Buddha said it's like having six different kinds of animals all tied together with leashes. You have a crocodile, and you have a monkey, and you have a chicken, and you have a bird, and you have a hyena. And if they're not tied to a post, again, they, they go running off in different directions, and whichever one tends to be strongest is going to drag all the other ones along with it. It happens to be the crocodile. All the other animals get dragged down into the water and they die. But if you have a firm post, you can tie all the animals to the post, and although they may pull and pull and pull, still after a while they settle down. And then they find real peace. That's the same with the mind. You train the mind to stay with one object like this. In the beginning it's going to pull. But where is it pulling you to? It's pulling you to sights, or sounds, or smells, or tastes, or tactile sensations, or thoughts of the past, thoughts of the future. And usually there's very little nourishment there. It's like trying to eat air. You open your mouth and you do all the chewing, but nothing comes in. But if you sit here with a breath, okay, there is a sense of nourishment, a sense of well-being, and the good qualities of mind actually become strengths of mind. You get strengthened by this process. And so you keep the mind with the breath. And then you find that you can actually free it from all the things that would pull it off in different directions. That means you're in a position to choose. Now, there will be times when you have to think, and there will be times when you have to plan for the future, remember the past. But you want to make sure that there's a reason for doing that. It's not just the alligators pulled you off. And this way you really are free, because then you can see that what you're going to do is for your long-term benefit. And that's what real freedom is good for. It's, it's You're able to do things that are for your long-term benefit, instead of just being forced to grab whatever you can right now. And here you've got the choice. Okay, do you want to live for short-term happiness or long-term happiness? If you want long-term happiness, the mind needs to be trained. And this is how you start it out, by being mindful of the breath, being alert to the breath. Mindful being, means keeping the breath in mind. Alert means actually watching what the breath is doing. And then you try to do this well. That's ardency. You try to breathe in a way that feels really comfortable. It makes it easier for your attention to stay here. It's good for the body and it's good for the mind, too. The body is refreshed by comfortable breathing. The mind has a good place to stay. It's a much better position where it can actually see all these things that are pulling it. The desire to go off to sights or sounds or smells, whether the alligator or the, the monkey or the bird. And you see them. Well, these are alligators, monkeys, and birds. Do you want them to, do you want them to be in charge? Do you, do you want to be in charge? You want a human being in charge, right? Okay, so that's why you want to meditate, so that the human being in your mind can be a lot stronger. Have a firm post to keep all these animals under control. So this is where true freedom lies. We talk about tomorrow being Independence Day, the day where we celebrate our freedom. Well, our real freedom comes from the mind's ability to see what's for its own benefit, or its long-term benefit, and being free to do that, not being a slave to the cravings that will pull it off in other directions. So this is where freedom really gets good. You can find true happiness with it, instead of just the ordinary bits and pieces of happiness that we tend to jump at when we find them lying around on the ground. We can raise our gaze and see further along that there's something really good down the road. Well, it takes training to go down the road and to resist all the little flashy things along the road. But if you get to the end of the road, you find that it really is truly happy. And as you're walking along, there's a sense of well-being, knowing that you're on a path that's going someplace instead of just wandering around following the latest flash on the ground. So try to keep this thought in mind that real freedom means where it really, real, real freedom really gets good is where it's free, when you're free to find true happiness. We talk about the pursuit of happiness. Well, Buddhism is about the pursuit of true happiness, and it's, the true there is really important. So always keep that point in mind. 
That's where the value of freedom lies.